We need medicine driven by very, very strong ethics, where in some ways, human health is a basic right. I think healthcare is undergoing a very important transformation. A lot more information is being fed and stored in digital format. That enables artificial intelligence to be run over that huge amount of data. So the opportunities are limitless. The biology of the human body is complex, and that means developing even one drug to treat illness or disease can take decades and over a billion dollars. Now AI is reshaping and revolutionising the process. Alex Zavaronkov, speaking to me from his robotics lab in China, is the founder of Insilico, an international AI-driven biotech company. Founded in 2014, it has evolved from an algorithm company working with pharmaceutical companies to using its own generative AI to develop and discover its own drugs. We basically talk to all the pharmaceutical companies to understand how the traditional methods uh, for drug discovery and development work and then created um, a blueprint of, consisting of many, many, many pieces that we could automate using AI or we could augment using AI, or we could transform using AI and using different forms of AI. Alex, tell me a little bit about the traditional process of drug development. So usually you start with the disease modeling. You try to understand why the disease happens, what is driving it, and what are the key primary driving factors behind the disease. Those driving factors are usually referred to as a protein targets. So you're trying to see which proteins are changing from normal tissue to disease tissue and trying to understand what is, what is driving it. Proteins are complex molecules and do most of the work in cells. They are important to the structure, function and regulation of the body. Think of it as a DNA being a blueprint uh, and uh, proteins being uh, specific machines that come out of this blueprint. And very often those machines are, are dysfunctional. And understanding the structure of the protein uh, is extremely important because you can find a way to stop it. You can find a way to inhibit it, to uh, make it lose its function, either uh, by creating a small molecule drug that will get into the active site of this machine and disable it, or an antibody that would do the same thing. Think about it as a lock and key uh, problem. So first you need to find the right lock uh, that uh, solves the, that opens the chest for health. Uh, and then you need to uh, find the proper uh, key for the lock. For any drug to be approved, it goes through a rigorous process. As Alex explained, First, scientists find a molecule that will work on a disease target, such as a gene or protein. In preclinical research, drugs undergo lab and animal testing for efficacy and safety. The drug then enters clinical trials, phases 1 to 3, where the drug is tested on people. Sometimes there are phase 4 trials once a drug has been licensed. Over 90% of therapeutics beginning clinical trials will not go to market. We need medicine driven by very, very strong ethics, where in some ways, human health is a basic right. I think that AI will be able to make repairing human health, or even maintaining human health, less and less expensive. Professor Michael Levitt is an advisor at Insilico and won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2013 for his work in the 1970s, using computers to calculate the courses of chemical reactions. The trouble is, is that there are many other things in drug design. There is how the body will react, which kinds of people will it affect. And this meant that many drugs that looked fine in the beginning would fail later on because the drugs were designed to bind to a protein. They didn't, you didn't realize that in your body there was another protein that was very similar. And when you put the drug in, so people got very sick because it affected the wrong protein. It was cross reactions. So I think the big, big problem throughout the history of, of Big Pharma was having a fairly local view of the problem, looking at one aspect or another aspect, where the real problem is, 
is how do you affect a disease? It, it, the, the essential thing um, about a drug is not that it binds to a protein, but how it affects a disease and has no side effects. And this, I think, is where the uh, work that has been done in silico medicine has been such a breakthrough. But another AI breakthrough had to happen first in 2018 to solve a long-running problem. Google DeepMind developed a program that could predict the 3D structures of proteins. This was vital because a protein structure largely determines its function, allowing scientists to develop drugs that target its unique shape. 2021, AlphaFold 2 was published, which was even more accurate. And uh, currently it allows hundreds of thousands of scientists to study biology at a new level. Now they can predict it and uh, maybe also explore how the different proteins interact with each other and do it all computationally without the need to perform experiments. Alex's own expertise in biotechnology and biophysics has helped to streamline In Silico's drug discovery process that covers all phases using generative AI systems. One step requires AlphaFold's protein structure program. We created a pipeline that pretty much covered all the steps of pharmaceutical R&D, but managed to automate everything that could have been automatable. The pipeline, I think that it's one of a kind. In addition to utilizing it ourselves, we have broken it up into three pieces. One piece is called Biology 42, and it allows us you to identify our protein targets very efficiently and very quickly. And our second platform is called Chemistry 32. It allows you to generate small molecule chemistry uh, with the desired properties. So it allows you to imagine new molecules that have the properties of good drugs or the protein of interest. And we also have a system called Medicine 42, which consists uh, of currently one big app. It's called Inclinico which predicts the outcomes of human clinical trials, phase two to phase three. Inclinico is designed to also recognize any weak points in the trial design, helping to overcome the traditional drug discovery problem where the failure rate in clinical trials can be as high as 90%. So far, the company has identified 31 potential drugs, and Alex is confident his team has the first drug in clinical trials designed by generative AI, which can generate new data from input data. Uh, usually going from zero to uh, phase one, phase two, the probability of that is less than percent. And what is so improbable became possible. And we've managed to enter phase two of human clinical trials now with an AI discovered, AI designed therapeutic. So there we utilized AI to identify a new target and we focused on fibrosis. Fibrosis is a very age-associated process, is driving aging, and at the same time, aging is driving fibrosis. Fibrosis is scarring that can occur in many tissues within the body, typically as a result of inflammation or damage. But it is also one of the biological processes dysregulated in aging. That's why, for example, in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, average age of a uh, patient would be about 65 and many other forms of fibrosis, like kidney fibrosis, uh, also it's mostly the elderly that suffer because they accumulated a lot of damage. Uh, and we've identified some targets that are implicated in both aging and fibrosis at the same time. After looking at a few possible fibrosis targets, the drug which is now in phase two trials is for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a chronic lung scarring disease leading to irreversible decline in lung function. And Silico has developed an inhalable formula for the drug and a new device for its administration. And it believes the compound may work in other forms of fibrosis. And then looked at the targets that are very important in multiple types of fibrosis, tested five, narrowed down to one, uh, all five work by the way, and then designed small molecules with the desired properties that can be orally available, reasonably safe, and go to the right tissue, do not go to the wrong tissue, and only target this particular target and nothing else at high potency. It took 30 months to reach phase one clinical trials, which normally can take four to five years to achieve. And another factor Alex says sped up the pipeline is the global nature of the company. All our synthesis and testing and uh, preclinical development, we usually um, 
outsource that to contract research organizations in China, some in India, but mostly in China, focus on quantum chemistry, quantum computing in uh, the UAE, uh, in Abu Dhabi, uh, do theoretical AI in Montreal. And for us, it's also one integrated global structure, uh, just like we approach AI. A large part of Insilico's lab work is in China, making use of biotech hub Shuzhou, which has enabled the setup of an autonomous lab. Here in Suzhou, they have really phenomenal robotics capabilities. Probably we also saved about a year, a year and a half compared to if we were to build this uh, lab in Europe or in, uh, in the US by building it in China. So robot picks it up, rides it micro place at this quality control, passes it to another room. There, you know, those R2D2 like autonomous guided vehicles pick it up, take multiple parallel routes, put part of the sample in the incubator, part of the sample into the imaging station part of the sample into the next generation sequencing facility, and you start getting huge amounts of data to see how the drug that we predicted to work worked on those data types. So we basically do before and after analysis, after AI made the target choices. So after multiple iterations, you get confidence, uh, and you get very confident that the AI can pick the good targets, and then you start giving it really specialized tasks to go and find new targets for a variety of diseases. So that's what our lab here does. Alex says not to expect transformative miracles from AI drug discovery, but he does think more changes can be made in the future to make a big impact, including smaller pilot studies and the ongoing development of quantum computers. I'm a big believer that quantum is going to be pretty transformative in the next couple of years. So we already see that with our early experiments. Uh, and generative chemistry seems to be the lowest hanging fruit for quantum computers. Not just quantum uh, chemistry, quantum computing, real quantum computers uh, can accelerate uh, generative chemistry. And uh, I think that we are going to see more and more of the quantum computers being used on our algorithms. What will Insilico be focusing on in the future? I think that in many countries, uh, the healthcare system is broken, right? So the, these long discovery cycles out in a massive waste, especially when the programs get terminated too early or if the drugs turn out not to work or be toxic at the very end, phase three. So having access to patients faster may dramatically reduce the healthcare costs to the entire global economy. I believe the use of data and AI will revolutionize the field of medicine. When we think about the power of data and the type of data we can gather and how AI fits the problem of better diagnosis and uh, improving health and longevity, we must think of ourselves as at the cusp of bringing a whole new way of doing medicine.